The following is a paid presentation furnished by Rare Collectibles TV, LLC. Rare Collectibles TV is proud to announce that we will now be offering a vast array of military collectibles used during the most significant events in our country's history. Antique firearms, swords, military flags, uniforms, and more. Surviving examples of these historic relics tell the story of our great nation's never-ending fight for freedom. Ranging from the American Revolution and the Civil War to World War I and II. Each of these historic, museum quality collectibles that we are offering is a national treasure and justly deserves to be displayed in your military collection. And many of these rare military collectibles that we offer have been used by American citizens in real battles to uphold and protect our inalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Each of these items you see today has been authenticated by firearms expert and military appraiser, Peter Carlin. With over 30 years of experience, Peter has certified rare military artifacts from every era of American history. The authentic military relics that Peter showcases and more can be found at rarecollectibles.tv.com. And here to tell you about some rare Civil War military artifacts is Rare Collectibles TV's co-founder and senior buyer, Jack McNamara. The American Civil War fought between the Union of the North and the Confederacy of the South from 1861 to 1865 was in many ways the ultimate test of our young, flourishing country's unwavering dedication to liberty and justice. During the Civil War, we as Americans were tested by the very Constitution that was written by our founding fathers during the origins of our country. And liberty and justice prevailed when the war finally came to an end. The Civil War, which pitted the North versus the South, has proven time and time again to resonate with us as Americans due to the undeniable fact that no matter what circumstance has been thrown our nation's way, we've always found a way to persevere and prosper as a country moving forward to a better tomorrow. It's no wonder why relics of the Civil War, like military swords, muskets, pistols, cartridge boxes, and even American flags have become some of the most popular collectible items among the patriots of our glorious country. And please understand that all of the antique firearms you will see today are for display purposes only. No antique firearm sold by RCTV is intended for use. And here to tell you more about the exclusive artifacts of the Civil War is antique firearms expert and renowned military appraiser, Peter Carlin. With over 30 years experience, Peter has certified military from the most significant periods of American history, including the Revolutionary War, World War I, World War II, and of course, the Civil War. Each of the military relics that Peter shows today has been personally authenticated and certified by him. And now, here's Peter Carlin. So during the Civil War, many weapons were employed in the field. And these are a selection of just a few of the weapons that we have available at our RCTV. And some of those were swords, which officers typically carried, muskets or rifle muskets, carbines, also known as cavalry carbines, pistols, bowie knives, and a variety of other materials that they would bring to the field. Officers typically carried a pistol and a sword. The cavalrymen 
typically a carbine and possibly a pistol, and the infantry would carry a musket with a bayonet attached. So one of the generals during the Civil War that was quite famous is a guy by the name of Ambrose Burnside, who was an inventor, he worked for the railroad, he was kind of a quasi-politician, and he actually submitted a patent for a cavalry carbine to the federal government to be employed during the war. He actually won that contract with the federal government to supply the troops with this carbine, and it was called the Burnside Carbine. Now here we have a very scarce second model Burnside Carbine and that came to us in a collection, a very old collection in the Northeast. And in the 30 years of collecting, this is the first one that I've ever had. It was made by the Bristol Firearms Company, later Burnside Carbine. Approximately 2,000 of these were made total. They were manufactured between 1860 and 1862. And it's an all metal barrel, probably heated up pretty good as, as they fired this. This was a 52 caliber cartridge carbine. This was used for horseback, you can see on the side here, it has provision for a lanyard, a strap uh, that would attach here, and this was a cavalry carbine. But at the first Battle of Bull Run, the infantry actually used these, although they were designated for the cavalry. And Burnside was on the field at first Bull Run, where his weapons were used for the first time in battle. He was on the field, and his units and some of the other units on the field were actually using the Burnside carbine. Another rare carbine that came in the collection in the Northeast was this Sharps carbine. Now, Sharps, Christian Sharps, was a very prolific maker of firearms prior to the Civil War, during the Civil War, and after the Civil War. And here we have a really kind of scarce, what's called an 1853 pattern, slant breech sharps carbine. These are kind of hard to come by. This one is all original, just as we found it, right out of the house in the Northeast, and it has some distinctive features that aren't found in other, in the later model Sharps carbine, including this long saddle ring bar. So it's just got a great look, and it's got a lot of good wear that you want to see with this cavalry carbine, especially here on the back. These marks here, you know, people say, well, it's all beat up or whatnot. No, that's not true. This is what we call really honest wear. This is where this would be riding on the horse, wearing against the saddle. That's called saddle wear right there. And this one is a really nice, all original, untouched example. A limited quantity of these came with an iron patch box. This one, you can see, has been there forever. The fit and finish is perfect. It's never been out of there. This is exactly the way this carbine came to us out of that collection. So when I go out and I buy these collections, and they, sometimes they've been sitting in collections for 30, 40, 50 years, and some of these carbines only come out once every 20 years to be offered to the public. These are fresh to the market items. All of these carbines are authentic, they've been vetted, they've been verified, and they're really great examples for your collection. And these are a selection of just a few of the weapons that we have available at our RCTV. And now today, these artifacts from the Civil War, when the North battled the South, are available for your very own personal collection. To learn more about these antique Civil War military artifacts, go to our website, rarecollectiblestv.com, and click on the Militaria icon. These items are in limited supply, so make sure to take advantage of this opportunity today while they're still available. And you can order with complete confidence as we offer you a full 30-day money-back guarantee, no questions asked. Each of these authentic Militaria items are one-of-a-kind treasures, meaning once they're gone, there will not be another exactly like it. Each of these exclusive early American artifacts tells a story about the earliest times of struggle, hardship, and ultimately triumph of our glorious nation during a time period when Civil War was taking place on our country's own soil. With such compelling stories to tell, each of these stunning military collectible pieces can rightfully belong in a museum exhibition. And yes, 
It's absolutely legal to own an antique gun produced before 1899 under the National Firearms Act. All of the antique firearms you will see today are for display purposes only. No antique firearm sold by RCTV is intended for use. Acquire your museum quality piece of American history today while you still can. To view our full selection of authentic antique military artifacts, go to our website, rarecollectiblestv.com and click on the military icon. That's rarecollectiblestv.com. So the revolver and the pistol was ubiquitous during the Civil War, carried by both sides, both Union and Confederate. Soldiers brought what they wanted to the fight. They used, often used backup pistols, they used boot pistols, they, they stashed pistols in their belts. They used everything they could as another form of defense. So here we have a variety of different pistols that were used during the Civil War. All these are Civil War era. They basically consist of Colts, Remingtons, Smith & Wessons, which are the three big names in firearms, but there were many other manufacturers of firearms and pistols that were used during the Civil War, both on the North and the South. The first one you have is the, the Colt Model 1860 Army Revolver. This was a tried and true revolver. This was carried primarily by the Union forces. Uh, they were manufactured in 1860 on, throughout the war and even after the war until the metallic cartridge was really used. This is a really nice example comes with a flap holster, which is an original Civil War flap holster. This would be worn on the, on the belt as such. And this one is just a really nice, all original example. So this pistol was carried by officers, typically in the Union. This was a preferred weapon of a lot of the high-ranking officers during the Civil War. This one actually is interesting because it has this little notch in the back, which means that it's cut for a shoulder stock. These were actually used as a cavalry carbine. They had a detachable stock. It has some great color, and this is works perfectly, locks up just as it, it should. But this one was a, a really good example of what the Union officers and cavalrymen would use in the field. Another manufacturer of firearms, which was like kind of a secondary manufacturer of firearms during the Civil War, was the Star Arms Company of Yonkers, New York. And I really had the pleasure of finding this one in a very old collection. And this one absolutely is a Civil War gun. You can tell that by a couple different factors. First of all, on the grip here, you have a little cartouche which means that that's a government inspector that basically looked at this gun, inspected it, stamped it, and said, this is good for service. This one actually came in the original flap holster. It's a star double action revolver. It's got a lot of nice finish on it, just the way you want to find them. Lots of blue on the cylinder and the barrel. And this one is a real Civil War, as they say, a Marshall pistol. Because of that cartouche on the grip and the flap holster, this one was definitely worn by a Union officer or cavalryman during the Civil War. Another name in firearms that's ubiquitous during the Civil War is the Remington Army Revolver, or the new model Army Revolver. And this is just a fantastic example of one that came in this old collection that we bought up north. And this is a true Marshall pistol, meaning that this one, again, was issued to the troops during the Civil War. And we can tell that, again, by this wonderful, nice, deep, crisp cartouche on the grip. This gun is a really nice example, shows a lot of color, a lot of factory finish, and obviously there was a big competition between these two manufacturers, the Colt and the Remington, and it still is argued today which was the be better gun. Is it the Colt 1860 Army or is it the Remington New Army Revolver? This is a question that will never be answered because you're never going to have Colt and Remington enthusiasts agree on that question. And this one, definitely a martial gun used in the Civil War, really nice example. During the war, one of the most 
popular guns that was carried by both the North and South was the 1849 pocket revolver. And these were manufactured, actually, if you think about the date, 1849, the 49ers, these were manufactured at the early onset of the gold rush, pre-Civil War. So these were manufactured from 1849 through the Civil War and past the Civil War. This one actually came in a case with all the accoutrements. It's got the powder flask and the uh, bullet mold, and it's got the lock and the key. The case is in pretty decent condition here, and you can see this is how it would come, something along the lines of that. It was used all throughout the Civil War. It was a 31 caliber pistol. It was good for your belt, uh, for concealment, and I've had a number of these pistols through the years with the name of the soldier on the back strap. It's documented these were used throughout the Civil War. They were very popular on both sides of the war. Now remember, a lot of these weapons are over 150 years old and it's amazing to find them in the condition that we have. These are only just a sampling of the pistols and revolvers that we have up on the website at Rare Collectibles TV. And another example of something that would brought to the field that is Civil War era, but not really manufactured for the war, is the pepper box. And you could probably tell why it was called a pepper box. These were made in Worcester, Massachusetts by Allen and Thurber. It's documented that these were used during the Civil War. This could have been used by a soldier. A lot of Southerners carried items like this. So this had a six-shot revolving barrel. Most revolvers, and this kind of predated a lot of the revolvers that were here, like the Colt Army or the Remington Army. So instead of having a, a, a cylinder that rotated and fired the rounds, this one actually had a rotating barrel. I usually don't dry fire these guns, but I'll show you how it works. Okay, so the bar hammer picks up. The barrel itself rotates and it has a six shot capacity. Now, during the Civil War, both the North and the South imported a lot of firearms from Europe, and here is a really nice example of one of those firearms that was kind of imported during the Civil War, and this is a British-made gun, and it's called a Tranter revolver. It's a double-action revolver. This one is a really nice, it's called like a wedge frame revolver. These were very popular guns by not only soldiers in the Civil War, like Jeb Stewart, but also Pinkerton Detective Agency used these. The Northwest Mounted Police used them. Sherlock Holmes was famous for using a Tranter revolver, maybe not this model, but he used Tranters. So these have a really rich history, not only in America, but in England also. Now in Civil War collecting, there's nothing like identified items. And this is a Smith & Wesson number no. two Army revolver. These were very, very popular in the Civil War by officers. I have had a number of these that are identified, but never have I had one that is identified to a Medal of Honor winner. And that's what this is. And this is a really, really special gun. This one actually belonged to a guy by the name of Henry Johns, who served originally in the 49th Regiment Massachusetts Infantry in Company C. It was a militia unit. He enrolled as a private, and the back strap here, you can see, says Lieutenant Johns, 61st Massachusetts Volunteer. And Johns was awarded the Medal of Honor for extraordinary heroism on May 27, 1863. So he likely was using this pistol when he won the Medal of Honor and then later after he joined the regiment and he became a lieutenant, he had his name engraved on the back strap. Now, I have to say, identified pistols are very sought after and very coveted by collectors. But to have a pistol by a Medal of Honor winner is just really kind of like the pinnacle of collecting. But it's just a really, really special gun. This is the only one we have that's ID'd to a Medal of Honor winner. It's the only one that I've ever had. And just absolutely thrilled to hold it in my hand and be a conservator of it and just steward it for a little bit and just to find the right home for it, and that could be you. It's documented, it's researched, and it's a really special piece. To learn more about these antique Civil War military artifacts, go to our website, rarecollectibles.tv.com, and click on the Militaria icon.
These items are in limited supply, so make sure to take advantage of this opportunity today while they're still available. And you can order with complete confidence as we offer you a full 30-day money-back guarantee, no questions asked. Each of these authentic Militaria items are one-of-a-kind treasures, meaning once they're gone, there will not be another exactly like it. To view our full selection of authentic antique military artifacts, go to our website, rarecollectiblestv.com and click on the Militaria icon. That's rarecollectiblestv.com. Here we have an example of the most iconic weapons of the Civil War, and that was the infantry rifle. And all of the infantry during the Civil War, either south or north, would use these rifles. And here we have a little bit of an assortment of them. You have to understand, during the Civil War, at the outbreak, there was not a lot of manufacturing going on. So a lot of these guns here were manufactured up under contract to the Civil War. The first one here is a Colt contract musket. Colt is an iconic name in American firearms. They started out making revolving rifles in Patterson, New Jersey, and they just morphed into one of the largest powerhouses of firearms in the world. And this one is an 1861 contract musket. This was built by Specs for the federal government, for the Union to fight. And this one is a really, really nice example. It basically comes in what we call Armory Bright. It has the cult manufacturing information on the lock plate. And this was a standard infantry weapon of the Civil War. It has provision for a socket bayonet. So when the officers were using the pistol and the sword, the infantryman was using the musket and the bayonet. It's marked to a New Jersey unit. Right here it says New Jersey on the barrel. And so we know not only that this was used for the Civil War and made for the Civil War, but we know who this was used for. This was used by the New Jersey troops during the Civil War. And this is a really nice example of a Colt infantry musket. The second musket or rifle that I want to show you is what we call in the field a screamer. And this one is just unbelievable when I saw it. Um, you don't find many in this condition. And this is what's called a Remington Zouave rifle. And this is a shorter, you can see this is a shorter than the longer rifle musket. This one is just absolutely in outstanding condition. You will not find them in this condition often, and when they do, they bring big, big premiums. And this one, as you can see, it, it virtually looks almost factory new. It's amazing that this was manufactured in 1863. If you look on the lock plate, there's case-hardened color. It's got all of the blue on the barrel. It was fitted for a big saber bayonet at the end, and it was a very imposing weapon during the Civil War. In outstanding, excellent condition, really hard to come by, and in 30 years of buying these, I have not really had one in this condition. And this is just, just an outstanding example and a rare opportunity to encounter. One of the most iconic rifle muskets in the Civil War was the U.S. Model 1863 Springfield. And this was widely, widely used by Union troops during the Civil War. And this one is what we call in, in kind of salty condition. This one, by the age, by the use, by the characteristics, by the wear, was very, very likely used in the Civil War. Okay, it's actually got a guy's initial D carved in the stock. He was probably starting to carve his initials. You'll see that on many muskets. This one shows all the characteristics of use during the Civil War. It has a little bit of pitting up by the, the nipple and the bolster where those repeated firings and that black powder would remain on there, kind of pitted. It's got a really nice clear markings on the lock plate. York Springfield, it's dated 63. And this is one example in just really nice, honest condition. So the most prized possession of Civil War collectors are identified items. And this one is a British musket. It's a P-1853 Enfield rifle musket. And this one is dated 1863 on the lock plate. And this was made in England by the Tower Armories. Probably the most imported gun 
during the Civil War by both Union and Confederate troops. And when I was looking at this gun, I, I was talking to my friend, and he said, yeah, it's got an old ID on it, and it does, and it has an old an identification tag. And a lot of this kind of stuff comes through the family, and it comes with oral tradition, and it says, oh, it's got, it's got this tag, it was used by this guy. But as I examined the gun, and as I looked at it closely, I saw on the underside of the trigger guard that it was marked IWHE23 in Roman numerals. Okay, so it had the initials and it had the unit on the trigger guard in punch lettering. And I looked at it and I said, that's dead real. There's no, that's what we call in the field a, a one looker. You look at that and say, that's definitely period done. There's no question about it. And I looked at the National Park Service Sailors and uh, Soldiers database and it came back to a gentleman by the name of Isaac Haskell, who served with the 23rd Maine Regiment during the Civil War. And it was a dead match definitely has the same initials. So this one is unquestionably a Civil War used Enfield musket, belonged to Isaac Haskell of the 23rd Maine. And any time that you get an identified musket like this, it just really, really is a special day. And these are a selection of just a few of the weapons that we have available at our RCTV. To learn more about these antique Civil War military artifacts, go to our website, rarecollectiblestv.com, and click on the military icon. These items are in limited supply, so make sure to take advantage of this opportunity today while they're still available. And you can order with complete confidence as we offer you a full 30-day money-back guarantee, no questions asked. Each of these authentic military items are one-of-a-kind treasures, meaning once they're gone, there will not be another exactly like it. And yes, it's absolutely legal to own an antique gun produced before 1899 under the National Firearms Act. All of the antique firearms you will see today are for display purposes only. No antique firearm sold by RCTV is intended for use. Acquire your museum quality piece of American history today while you still can. To view our full selection of authentic antique military artifacts, go to our website, rarecollectiblestv.com and click on the military icon. That's rarecollectiblestv.com. The proceeding was a paid presentation furnished by Rare Collectibles TV, LLC.